Welcome to Sharon Local History. The third power on Beaver Brook occurs at the Sharon Box Company. This property is on the corner of North Main Street and Canton Street. The Beaver Brook actually used to be called Moose Hill Brook at one point. In this video I would like to tell you about the box factory and its history. The original Sharon Box Factory was built in 1856 as a one-story water-powered saw and grist mill. The source of the water power was derived by flooding an apple orchard and meadow to create a pond from the stream that ran through the property. Local residents utilized the source for corn ground and to saw local logs. At this point I would like to attach the videos I took at Sturbridge village. This is a sawmill from early 1800s. In early New England most things were made out of wood. Not just houses and other buildings, but bridges, furniture and vehicles. Every rural neighborhood needed a supply of sawn lumber. Yet logs and lumber are heavy and it was too expensive to haul them very far over rough roads. Most towns had several sawmills. In the early 1800s there were thousands of them across New England. Most sawmill owners were successful farmers looking for a profitable investment. They either bought a sawmill or had one built by a skilled millwright on a suitable location. Their mills produced sawn lumber for themselves and neighborhood customers. Most customers brought their own logs to mill and paid to have them sawn into boards and planks. Have you ever seen someone use a handsaw? The up and down motion of the toothed blade cuts the wood. Early water powered sawmills worked the same way with a mechanism that imitated how the task was done by hand. In the sawmill, a crank attached to a water wheel moves a long saw blade up and down to cut logs into squared lumber. Machinery never gets tired or bored and so the mill can do much more work in a day than man alone. In 1864, Amont Leonard of Foxborough purchased water power and created a box factory. The logs came from nearby sites and were sawed and converted to boxes to be used by Morse Bros of Canton. The Morse brothers were descendants of a Sharon resident who invented rising sun stove polish. Denied a permit to expand his business, Elijah um, Morse moved his business to Canton. The manufacture of boxes for Morse brothers employed 15 men. Some boot boxes also were made and delivered by horse and wagon into Boston. Just before the turn of the century, Ralph Brown purchased the water power and remodeled. No sooner were the renovations completed than the two-story new structure was consumed by fire. Undoubted, Brown built again, this time replacing the source of power with a new steam engine and the use of water power was practically abundant. This is one of the oldest photographs of the mill from 1898. In 1912 the business changed hands again. This time it was purchased by two brothers, Arthur R. and Charles Smith of Boston. Their largest customer was Rice and Hutchins Shoe Company of Braintree. Um, the, it was large shoe manufacturing and wholesaling company based in Boston. Um, thousands of boxes were carted daily to Braintree via horse and wagon. With the start of World War I, the demand for boxes increased dramatically. Many additional employees were taken on and improvements were made to the facilities. Additional supplies of lumber came from Maine and New Hampshire. The additional lumber was shipped by train to Sharon Heights and hauled by horse and wagon to the site of Sharon Box. Later, a railroad siding by the plant were made, was made. 
Waste was a great problem in processing so much wood. To eliminate this problem, box ends were sold for firewood and sawdust was bagged for use by local farmers as bedding. The close of World War I meant a decline in the demand for boxes and a new source of competition arose, a cardboard box. This and fire in 1929, which particularly destroyed the operation, forced the Smith brothers to sell the operation. Most of the machinery was dismantled and sold to other box manufacturers. The manager of the plant, George Durrell, purchased what was left and tried to make a go of things. He employed five men and struggled for eight years. In 1937, as the Depression eased, the concern was purchased by Arthur Rhodes of Bellingham. Rhodes was the owner of vast industrial lumber concern. He combined the manufacture of board and boxes and did quite well. When the hurricane of 1938 hit, much of New England's and Sharon Street's were felt by wind. To preserve the locks until they could be planted and sowed, thousands were sunk in lakes. Lake Massapoak and the pond behind Sharon Box were vast holding tanks for lumber before it could be milled. In the pond behind Sharon Box alone, over 2 million feet of locks were stored. Here are two short videos of the sawmill pond, how it looks like today in 2021. Rhodes rapidly expanded the business achieved at the Sharon Box factory location, necessitating that the two portable sawmills be put online. With demand, everything shipped overseas had to be sent in wooden boxes. In addition, special items such as skids, pallets and heavy crates also were needed and manufactured here in Sharon. Six delivery trucks were added to the original truck purchased in 1915. The steady outpour of production utilized all the lumber produced by three lumber mills in New Hampshire. A garage to those trucks was constructed, as well as machine shop to keep the machinery in working order. In 1944, another hurricane swept through New England, this time seriously affecting Plymouth County. The Sharon Box Factory and Sawmill handled a three-year contract. Trucks and machines may be great for hauling lumber over open roads, but nothing could beat the working draft horse for pulling logs out of the woods. Rhodes grew to love and admire the draft horse. In 1945, he made a trip out west and purchased a pair of Belgian draft horses. He won several blue ribbons with his team in pulling competitions when they were not busy at the Sharon Box Factory transferring lumber from the yard to the planar. Motorists stopped their cars and visitors to the yard were awed by the pair of matched powerhouses. In 1948, there was an addition to the plant. A two-story annex was added to the rear to the house. More equipment and more employees were added. In 1950s, a sale office was constructed and office personnel hired. In this same year, the assets of Frank H. Cole Company in North Carver were purchased and the sawmill operations were set up there in the heart of the White Pine country. In 1951, a new planar was purchased and box making became fully automatic. A forklift was purchased to further expedite the handling of lumber. Here is one photograph from 1976. It's not the best quality, but it gives you idea how large the company was. In 1993, Geller family purchased the building of the former box company and they started Barney and Curry Lumber, which was selling high quality lumber. After 22 years, Kevin Geller closed the business in Sharon and moved his facility to his business rather to Avon. However, the owner was able to turn the box factory into very classy, modern condominiums. 
you can see them on the picture here. Um, I took a few short videos of how the building looks like now. I think the owner and architects did an incredible job making the building fit um, our community. And um, here is the back side. And I think it's a pretty good fit. Here you can see the stone wall that adds a really nice touch. And here's a short video of the water running from the pond. Enjoy the sound. Next time you drive or walk uh, by the intersection of North Main Street and Canton Street, pay attention to this building and think about its history. This is the end of our video. I hope you uh, learned something about the history of the Sharon Box Company. And and its significance to Sharon. Thank you for watching Sharon Local History. Feel free to join us on Facebook. The name of the group is Sharon Local History.